So we were lucky enough to have Peter Davies from uh, Jigsaw Trading to come talk to us about their new product. It's called Journalytix. Hopefully I pronounced that right. As a disclaimer, we don't get paid any commission or, or any sort of finder's fee for referring this software to our clients and to our followers. I simply think it's just a great idea and I think our clients will get a lot out of it. So we're excited to have Peter here to, to give us some information. I guess uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Pete. Okay, there you are. So you should all be able to see me now. Okay, can you see my screen there, Carly? I can see you well. Everything looks good and sounds good. Okay, good. Right, so uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, this is a little bit different uh, from the normal presentations we give. We're not really going to talk about um, how to trade in this one. Um, my name is Peter Davis. This is me at a prop firm in London. Um, is one of a number of prop firms I work with. Um, typically, I work with the managers, traders, but also the educators at the firms and uh, tend to keep in touch with the educators a lot. It's kind of close to my heart. So I do have a pretty good idea of what makes these firms tick, uh, what separates the good firms from the bad firms, and also some of the best practices they have in place to give their traders the best chance of success. And... Um, where these one of the big places these firms differ from the trades at home or the typical retail traders i'm not going to try and bunch you all into one group um is that uh, at a prop firm they have a very different focus and uh, i'll tell you what if you gave your typical retail trader a profitable setup they would most likely fail to profit from it and most likely throw it away now partly that's because it takes time to become proficient at any trading method and so your first attempts with any setup are going to be poor or well, they're not going to achieve you know the maximum that setup could achieve so what typically happens people will take a setup they'll try and apply it they'll measure the performance by the p l that are generating their first attempts and then they decide it doesn't work and that's a cycle that these traders go through um you know for in some extremes i've met traders going through that uh, process for 20 years and there is a different cycle that you can expose yourself and it's a cycle of improvement a cycle of awareness being aware of both patterns in the market and aware of patterns in your own behavior so where every trader starts off uh, that we're all column is, uh, common is that we all start off in the learn stage and uh, to some extent it doesn't really matter too much which technique you choose to adapt as first as long as it's not something like trading you know moon phases or horoscope so you know, you learn some kind of method and then you trade it on SIM if you're smart. And then the step that most people miss is this one. You analyze the results, you analyze your performance. And that means um, if you've ever seen the webinars by Brett Steinbarger, um, end of each day, end of each week, every end of each month, you take a step back and look at what you did, what the results were, how well you reacted, and you look at what you need to do better. And in some cases, of course, um, you may decide that what, what you learned initially was of little value, but the, the, the way that you've come to that decision is a lot more rational than just to trade it and see what comes out at the other end. So at the end of each day in prop firms like uh, Axia, um, Signet, SMB, firms that I uh, talk to, firms that actually produce profitable traders, those traders take a step back every day and review their day. Now, I, I do work with traders one-on-one, -on -one and... Um, it's just that at the moment, as you trade, it is a little bit hard to assess the day without emotion. So you have to take a cold, dispassionate look at your performance and the way you traded and learn lessons from it, which you can then use to improve your trading in the future. Now, these reviews that are done, um, they're daily for a day trader, could be weekly, monthly for a longer term trader. And that's not really the important thing. What is important, though, is the most important lessons you're going to learn about trading aren't really the setups, where do I get in, but the things you learn in the assessment of your performance. So, for instance, if you find that you're, um, you know, the trades I work with, I often get people who say, you know, they're ex and exiting their trades too early. And one of the best solutions if you're exiting your trades too early is watch videos of yourself doing it. And uh, it's a painful process. Most people don't want to do that. It sounds a little bit like hard work, but then making money um, sitting at home from the markets should be hard work. So a lot of traders just want to click buy and sell, make tons of money, but it's just unlikely this is going to happen um, if you don't properly leverage your trading experience to improve your trading. So if you're in a new <coughs> process right now, 
amounts to looking at how much you gained or lost at the end of the day, you are actually putting yourself at a disadvantage to people in prop firms who are always figuring out how to learn from their experience. And with that, I'll stop lecturing you. And I'm going to introduce you to something called Journalytics. So Carly Neely got the name right. And it's a trade journaling system that works with lots of trading platforms and also data feeds uh, like the Zena 360 from Dakali. Okay, so this is a cloud-based system that supports your trading efforts by delivering information uh, to you both while trading and while you're reviewing your results. So first, we'll look at what it gives you while you're trading. Uh, during any trading day, there's a number of things that can skew the results of any trading method that you need to be aware of, right? So each day, for instance, you need to be aware of both unscheduled and scheduled news, right? Without that, you are missing some of the most important contextual clues that are going to help you understand what's happening with your results. So real-time news itself is important for a number of reasons. Occasionally, and uh, you know, this is Angela Merkel is my nemesis in this respect. Uh, some news events will move the market against you and stop you out. Now, that is not something you can prevent. It's it's just going to happen, right? But knowing a specific trade went against you because of a news event is pretty handy because when you review at the end of the day, you can pretty much ignore that loss. There's nothing really you can do. Um, to prevent losses like that, unless it was like a scheduled Fed speech or something like that. Um, often news is going to set the tone for the day, like a terrorist attack. I know it's not good to talk about these things, you know, in, in trading terms, but it's true. If there's a terrorist attack, um, major organization going bankrupt, interest rate changes, large companies releasing particularly good or bad results, these are all things that could create additional volatility during the day. So quite often you'll see overnight the market has had a, a large range, and if that's news driven, you can make some considerations for how that's going to impact the day session, right? You know, you, you can, you can uh, maybe make some adjustments to the way you trade. Now, news intraday, during the day, while you're not in a trade, can also impact vol volatility. So if you see a sudden spike in one of the markets you're looking at and you haven't got a news feed, you're not going to know if that spike in the market was news driven or not. It could just be like a volume bluff. So let's say you see crude spike down. Could quite easily be that that's just a volume bluff on, on crude. But if you see crude spikes up, for instance, and an oil rig has just exploded, then you know that spike up is probably going to be something that's going to be sustained, right? And, uh, and again, if you don't have some awareness of the news, you're really not in a good position to, to, to trade to, you, to your optimal extent. So in Journalytics, we give you a news feed. You can do two things with it. First of all, you can customize it. Second of all, you can listen to it. Because as most of you have got your eyes on some kind of trading platform, um, it leaves your ears free to absorb the news. So this is a real-time news feed. Um, you know, you can always come back later um, and check the pages if you want to read the, the, the full article. What I tend to do is if, if there is a major spike, I will go back and, and read through the news. Now, you can customize the news uh, both in terms of the news outlets that appear on the feed uh, and the voice that the newsreader uses. So as we add news feeds quite regularly, we don't actually ask you to opt into feeds. Um, we tell you to block feeds that you don't want to hear. So there are some amazing uh, feeds nowadays. Bloomberg's on here. Um, but they don't always have the edge. So it's quite common, for instance, for um, feeds like Zero Hedge to announce market-breaking news uh, before some of those larger organizations. So we've got those guys on there as well. So basically, as that news comes in, in real time, it'll be read out to you. Um, what you can see on this screen, this is just the setting screen. You can see I've got Bloomberg Quint. Block T, if you don't know Bloomberg Quint, that's an Indian um, news feed. It's probably not really um, something that's going to affect the, my trading. Uh, BBC, far too much noise uh, for financial news. So you can actually just block, block the news feeds you don't want to uh, see or listen to and uh, get your real-time news. So now you've got like an understanding every day of unscheduled news and you're able to understand how unscheduled news impacts your day. What about the scheduled news? Because throughout the day, 
we have different countries, as we all know this, right? You're not learning anything new here. Different countries announce statistics about GDP, employment, growth, purchasing, production, retail sales, sales, and so on. And we all know about these, and some of these announcements can produce severe reactions, but it is quite easy to forget. And also, if you go to some of the mainstream sources for the financial news, they tend to only have a subset of the actual news releases on there, which is why we carry news releases from actually everywhere. Um, so we've actually got a global economic uh, release feed that's real time. So you can actually look at the news that's going to impact you. So um, for me, Germany, UK, because I trade in European sessions as well, Germany and UK have a significant impact. Um, if you're trading after hours, for instance, US evenings, look, keeping an eye on Japan, uh, maybe even Australian interest rates, there's a lot of people spreading um, Australian US interest rates. So, you know, once you get to know these things, you might find that some of the other countries do actually have a bearing on um, the markets you're trading. Okay, so what you're looking at here is we've got the current day overview. Uh, we've got the news here. And what we show on the economic news is we just show, and it's the current day, we just show the last 30 minutes economic news, or economic events, sorry, and then the ones in the future. Because basically that's what you're interested in. You're interested in what's just happened and what's coming up. Um, now, you can opt to get five-minute and one-minute warnings before the numbers are released. Right? And you can decide to have uh, warnings for everything, or you can just have the high-impact events. So here's some uh, one-minute warnings. Uh, those minutes, those warnings stay on the screen for one minute or until you click clear uh, these notifications at the top here. And, uh, and here's some five-minute warnings. Now, these warnings come along with what I would say is the silkiest, velvety, uh, soft, luscious beep you've ever heard in any software anywhere. In other words, it gives you an audio warning, but it's not annoying, okay? Which is really important if you're trading, not to have some, like, duck quacking every few minutes. Anyway, on the chance that you forget the employment numbers are about to be released because you're so engrossed with trading, this is going to tell you five minutes before and one minute before. Now, when the actual news comes out, you get additional notifications. Now, for a lot of you, you're probably standing aside during the news events or, you know, for the longer term traders, you're probably, um, you know, not too worried about them, but you're not going to get in one minute before. Uh, for the short term traders, you're probably staying flat into the news. But there are people who trade the news events themselves. And for those people, you get additional notifications. And you can see that the, actual, the, the real time news comes in in two places. Now, this is a real time feed. It's, it's a constantly connected feed that the moment the news comes out, it comes into the system. And uh, the highlighted numbers here are the ones, the numbers that have just been released. And then again, you see these notifications at the side. Um, and like I say, it's a real time, always on feed. So the moment the, the numbers announced, you're going to get the notification. And that's very handy if you're trading the events themselves. Okay, so everything you've seen so far is basically worth the price of admission for these tools. But there's a lot more to it. Um, but basically, keeping you properly appraised of the schedule and economic news is basically worth the price of what this costs. So everything else we're going to look at is free. Now, we can see at the top here, we've got something that's a P&L chart and risk charts. Now, you get this view for every day you trade, and you can come back and review this for every day you trade, right? So what we have here, we have a P&L chart and a risk chart. Now, we call this the day overview or the real-time trading assistant. Um, what we can see on the P&L chart, we can see a running P&L, which is the Scion line. The histogram here tells us how many trades we've closed in each 30-minute period. And for some traders, that's quite a lot. So as you can see here, uh, we're at 8.30 here. Uh, running P&L for the day is 7.263.96. And at that particular time, we can see the yellow dot here. Uh, that means retail sales month on month for Australia were just released. And um, we can see that basically what's happened is, even though later in the day we've closed additional trades, uh, most of the profits were made early on. Now, for the people who use journalytics, they can see every day play out like this, and they can go back and look at uh, anomalies and outlying days uh, to see how they played out. Now, the other part of this is risk. So obviously you want as a trader to be making more profit when you're taking more risk. 
if you've got more losses when you're taking more risk, then you really do have a, an issue to address. So we can see the risk as, well, they look like charts, so HLC bars. Um, this is represented in number of contracts. There are other ways to show the risk, but we show a number of contracts. And um, as we can see here, rightly so, uh, the profits peaked coinciding with a peak in risk, which is obviously the way it should be. Now, now in this view, this isn't looking at one trader. This is actually looking at a team of trader traders. So this tool here works for prop firms with teams of traders, and it works for individual traders as well. Okay. Um, so the other way it works is um, if one trade or one of your accounts is long uh, S&P Futures 20 contracts and another is short S&P Futures 12 contracts, um, total risk would be eight contracts. So it nets out the risk across uh, different, across the same contract on different accounts or different people. So as I say, you can view any historical trading day this way. Um, and from the calendar, we'll see, you can actually zoom in. You can look at a calendar, zoom into any problematic or particularly good days to then start investigating what happened there. And as you go through each day, you're going to start to see patterns emerging in the way those days play out. Right now, you can't see your day playing out like this. But every day, as you see your, your day playing out, you're going to start to see patterns emerge. You're going to know whether that day is kind of within uh, tolerance of the way you usually perform. And the same goes for weeks and months as well, obviously. Um, you're going to see how you react to news, um, how you perform when you act rationally, uh, and you're also going to be able to look at outlying days where you behave uh, badly. Um, at the bottom here, we can see open trades. So they're the trades that are open now. And when we look at history, they'll be the trades that were open at the start of that day. And then below that, we've got um, all the closed trades with the P&L. Now, the P&L here is in instrument currency, but the running P&L is in US dollars. We do actually store the closing exchange rates for every day um, in the system. So, you know, if we want to change the reporting currency to euros, we can do that for you. Um, and uh, so basically, you know, you can get any currency. If you trade euros, but you're counting dollars, it will convert that. Um, you also see this icon at the side. You see this little green uh, icon there. That's the notes icon. That's for the trade journal. The comments here, this is just a summary of the comments here, and the hashtags are also from the trade journal. Now, we've all sat in webinars where we've been told how important it is to keep a trade journal because it's the way that you add meaning to your trade history, right? A, an account statement has no meaning. Even one sentence of notes is going to give your history so much more meaning than just in and out, right? So we all know how important it is to keep a trade journal. Uh, we all know that nobody does it. Uh, it's important to know how you felt, what the setup was, uh, and any other information you want to add that, that trade that you can potentially use in analysis. So Journalytics is the only automated trade journaling tool. It works with lots of platforms and data feeds. And basically what happens is, you open or close a position, and then within a couple of seconds, a notification like this appears on your browser window. Now, that can be the same PC as your trading platform, or it could be a piece, separate PC. It could be a PC in a different country. Um, it could be a, a tablet or, that you use for journaling. So this notification here is for a closed trade. I know that because there's P&L on it. Um, and these trade notifications... They're different from the, uh, the news-based ones. These ones stay on the screen until you click the little cross and dismiss them, or you click clear notifications at the top. And they stay on the screen because if you click the notification, you then get to this screen. Okay, so what did we do? We made a trade on our platform. A little notification popped up. We clicked, and we get to here. And here is the journal entry. Right. So there isn't anything around there that will get you to your journal for any trade as quickly and as efficiently as this. You click buy or sell, click notification, and there's your journal. Now, at the top, we've got a trade type, and you set those trade types up in advance. That's used in reporting later. Reporting later. Um, so it might be scalp, momentum, pullback, you know, setup A, setup B, setup C, whatever type of trade it was. Really, really important to have this, first of all, for reporting. But second of all, you know, you want to be, instead of looking at a, a blank statement, if you can say which type of setup it was, 
that you took. And if you can do, do just that and nothing else, all of a sudden you can get really rich reports on how that setup's performing, right? So you can be testing forward five or six setups and then just report at the end of a month and see which one performed the best. Then we have emotional states. These are going to be customizable over the next week or so. But basically, we give you five categories to describe how you felt during a trade. Did you follow your plan? Did you react well to market behavior? What was your kind of gut feeling at the time of entry? Again, it's all optional. And then we've got notes. Now, there's two ways to enter notes. You can type the notes or you can talk. Now, we do support over 130 language variants, English, UK, English, American, Japanese, Chinese. You can see this is Thai here. Uh, this was my son. Uh, I'm in Thailand, by the way. Uh, this was my son. He's half Thai, and uh, I've done what that says, but I hope it's, uh, hope it's nothing rude. I do apologize to any Thai speakers in the room, and that's naughty. Um, you know, Arabic. But the idea is that you can just say what you're thinking rather than type it. Now, you do to do this, you do need to speak clearly and pronounce your words properly. So I know I've got a bit of an accent, and I can tend to miss the last letter off the end of words. Well, if you do that, it will miss the last letter off the end of the words. But that's fine. Um, even if you do that, you'll still be able to read it back, and it will be legible. So what you have to do with the voice recognition uh, some people will be like, uh, take to it like a duck to water. Other people like me, it takes a short while to get to tune in and, and understand the best way to talk for the, the dictation. It's well worth the effort to do so. Now, you can also paste videos, paste images into this log, make it as rich and meaningful as you want, or just put in a sentence, right? This was a trade. This is what I did. This is why I got out, right? Now, as you can see here, you can add additional hashtags to the trade. So for example, um, again, with a lot of the trades I work with, the, they start off looking at an individual setup, but even within that setup, there are some setups that come along that they feel a premium, right? So you can have a hashtag premium or a hashtag quality A, quality B, quality C. You might exit early and tag the trade with hashtag early exit. So once the hashtag's been used, the next time you type hashtag in a letter, you can have autocomplete that's going to help use the same tag again. You can then run analysis on the various tags to see what tags we use in the trades and how that impacted p &L. So you could, if you had a hashtag early exit, you could do an analysis of all of your trades with early exit and see, you know, were they profitable, were they less profitable than other trades. In other words, you've got effectively infinite categories to classify your trading and see how they impact on the performance with really little effort to put that in on your behalf. It's very powerful stuff. And this is one example of an actual customer's log. It's categorized, um, you know, some very brief notes, order flow trade, uh, leg. Um, so basically that means a pullback, I believe, uh, consolidation pullback leg. It's got two legs. Well, that's kind of normal, I guess. Okay. Um, so, like I said, this is good. You don't have to put the image in if you don't want to. You don't have to be excessive with logging, but it's really good to do some brief analysis of what you did and why that you can then review at the end of the day and the end of the week and, and so on. Um, you know, whether you felt, uh, you know, if you feel you mishandled a trade in any way, that kind of thing. Now, you can um, categorize and journal your trades during the day, but there are some people who are really high, high uh, frequency and uh, so if you do miss some trades, if there's some trades that you didn't journal, um, the journal acts as a reminder. So you can come here at the end of the day, do a review, and then uh, and just catch up on the ones you missed. Or maybe you don't um, do any journaling in the day, and you just come to this journal queue and, class all, uh, and do the ones you missed. And what you can do in here, you could just come through your trades and just click on the trade type, categorize them. We don't want to journal them and then dismiss them. Okay? So you can put as much or as little in as you like. Okay, now I don't know how I got to this slide, but anyway, so I'll just kind of forget that one. We'll come back to that later. So this, what we're looking at now, this is what we call the calendar. And this is a really good tool for your monthly reviews. Um, I've heard um, so some of the traders that have been using this for a while, we've, we started a beta about a year ago on this and ran it for, we ran about 2 million trades through it in beta. Um, People loved the calendar because it gave them a, a target. You know, they could come in every day and they could see 
um, whether they were whether they're profitable or not, you know, the previous day. And they had a, you know, that it gave them a bit of uh, incentive to end the day's profitable. The other incentive is you can't delete any trades from this, right? There is no deleting trades from this. So you, if you trade something, it's in there. One of the reasons that we do that is because, you know, if you want to get picked up by a prop firm, this can act as your resume to do that. Whereas if you are able to delete trades, delete accounts, that it, it, it makes it, it makes, it's not a validation of your trading at all, right? So this, warts and all, this is your trading, right? If you're one of those people who, you know, I can't bear to look at yesterday's trading, this one's going to show you yesterday's trading. And you need to get over that. You know, if there are, there are people who they have a bad day and they just want to hide it and blinker it, but this will, this will not hide it from you. You won't be able to run from that anymore. Anyway, I'm logged on as a prop firm in this case, um, but the individual trade of you is similar, just uh, obviously less trades and smaller numbers. Um, you can browse through months of, and months of data in seconds. Just click through, uh, click to your, your, your trade, your months, uh, to get a feel for the month over month improvement. There's other ways to do that as well. Uh, with the analytics um you know we can see a, a summary at the top we can see a, a breakdown by the day and then we can instantly zoom in um to the day and and see different things with the square we can see the notes of the day with this uh grid icon here we can just see the blotter the trade list and then with the kind of half moon uh, the, the circle that's where we go to look at the day overview for that day so we can zoom into any day see the day overview um so we can look at our month we can identify exceptional days. We can go and zoom in and look at those specifically exceptionally good or exceptionally bad. Um, you know, zoom into the comments and zoom into the trades. Now, these um, day log comments, you see zooming into the comments for a day. And when we look at the comments of the day, there's two types of comments that you can have. There's day log comments, uh, which is what people use to give a statement on the day, right? So you've got to the end of the day. You can use the day log to put in your prep before the day, or you can use it to do your, your summary at the end of the day. And I'm, I've blanked some of the names out here because these are actual traders' uh, names. So you can see the day comments at the top from various traders for the day in my uh, fictional prop firm. One of the traders is Chinese, uh, so his comments are in his own language, so you can use any language here. And then below that, you can actually see the additional, the individual trades and any attached notes. That's just one way of looking at a list of trades. We do have specific um you know trade list views too um and there's even a search engine for your journal so you can search by comment you can search by hashtag you can search by instrument to find matching trades or day notes um and as you can see here i search for the word lucrative um which is one of my common hashtags um that i got from a guy called rich friesen who tends to uh recommends tagging to all trades either uh, lousy or lucrative which i find uh, quite interesting Anyway, back to the calendar. There's a monthly and a weekly calendar. And the key here is just giving you the ability to take a step back, do a review, look for anomalies, good and bad, always trying to find ways to prevent poor behavior, but more importantly, to repeat good behavior. If something's working well, you might, it might have slipped your, slipped your mind at the time. So the calendar's key in this respect is, you know, the days you go off the rails are gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Um, you know, like I say, many of the journalistics use the, the reporting improvements just because those they know those days they go off plan. It's going to spoil their calendar, so it's get, so they become a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more. Uh, what's the word? Um, they behave better. Yeah, I can't think of the word. It's late here. So, like I say, you can't delete the uh, trades in journalistics uh, because prop firms have expressed interest in using the data to find traders. The dashboard is where you slice and dice your trading data. Um, this is the analytics. Um, as you can see here, what we've got, we've got two date ranges, um, enabling you to compare two periods. Uh, you can then uh, select uh, accounts, you can select instruments, you can select trade types, you can select hashtags to analyze. Now the first layer of information here is the statistics layer. So here you can see things like profit factor, average win size, lose size, time in trades, all the stats you expect to see um, in, the, in a tool like this. Um, you can just page through and scroll through the stats uh, with the arrow buttons here, or you can just click show stats here to get like a full view uh, of all the stats in the list view. Um, then we've got um, in this view, the, the prop firm view, this is trader name. Uh, for the individual traders, you'll have a list of accounts. You might have some sim and live accounts. You might have futures and forex and Bitcoin accounts. 
and you'll see the different accounts here. Um, the first chart we see is the daily running PL. Um, the current period is in green, uh, prior period is in pink. Um, you can obviously highlight anywhere in that chart and then you'll see uh, the current values there. Performance by hour is next. Um, this is really important. One of our prop firm clients had a trader that was consistently giving profits back later in the day. Um, they weren't really they weren't really aware of it completely. They, they knew he was, was struggling in some way, but when they when they put this in, it became clear he just wasn't taking a break. They could see, you know, the trade distribution here was not letting up, but the performance on the right. It was taking a dip at three o'clock on a lot of days, you know, and, and, and quite a big dip as well, giving a lot back, almost all back. Uh, he was still trading as aggressively, but he was just losing his edge, giving profit back. And um, they ended up kicking him out of the office. Not permanently, but like every day. They kicked him out of the office. They made him stop, go for a walk, do something else, come back, refresh, and start again. And that fixed his problem. Um, you know, there's other reasons your performance might suffer at different times of day. Kids getting home from school. Market slows down. Certain techniques... Just don't work at those times of day. Key thing is spotting it, investigating it, then adjusting, obviously. The day of week analysis is also key. Um, quite often, a lot of techniques, it's normal for Fridays to have a, a lower return, um, obviously. Obviously, not with this data, um, but it is quite normal. Um, and then, uh, in this case, we have a, a breakdown by trader. That would be account for a lot of you, uh, showing the P&L again for each account. And then the instruments. So we've got a breakdown by instruments. Now we've got both periods. We, we're looking at a previous period uh, and current period here. This is the current period, so we can see the winning PL, losing PL, and then total PL here. Um, I'm not sure what an OZW strangle is uh, at all. <laughs> That's a new one to me, but I'm going to Google that after this presentation. Um, you can also click to see that in pie charts here, and you can also get a breakdown by trade types obviously if you've been if you've been putting in trade types for your trades you get a breakdown there so based on this um you can see actually in this uh, particular set of data the the most profit come from the dollar swiss franc um this is test data though so now i might want to go back to the filters and exclude the dollar swiss franc so i can actually better see how i did on the other instruments and this way you can kind of break down slice and dice trading data to really get an in-depth understanding of where the profits and losses come from you know, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Now, according to our friend Brett Steenbarger, um, the worst thing you can do with a journal is keep it to yourself. And I know this personally. I've been posting uh, pre-market prep online on one of the trading forums for almost five years. And it's kept me a hell of a lot more honest than if it was just me seeing it. So part one of our going public is the opt-in leaderboard. Now, we do give monthly prizes for the top performer here. And you can only get to the top of this on a month by doing one thing, and that is by being consistent. So if you swing for the fences and have big highs and lows, you will go straight to the bottom of the leaderboard. Now, consistency doesn't mean a high win rate. I'll tell you, some of the best traders, I know, some of the, I know prop traders who make ludicrous amounts of money. You know, they have six-figure days, and uh, they've got 50% win rates. But what they're doing, they really push the advantage when they have it. So first thing you need to do to get on the leaderboard is you need to turn up and trade. You need to not be putting in large drawdowns. You need to be putting in uh, consistent profits. It helps uh, if you have uh, losing days that you recover from, kind of gives you some bonus for that. And uh, it gives you credit for other little things, other kind of good behavior things. Now, the actual algorithm it uses is from a prop firm. And it's based on the criteria they use to say, right, you're a sim trader now. If you do this, this, and this, we're going to let you, we're going to fund your account. So this is kind of the intern trades in prop firms. So once again, this helps you stick on the straight and narrow. Now, again, we've had a lot of feedback from trades about how much this has helped them to be consistent, just being around and seeing other traders' consistent behavior, but also having their behavior on there as well. Now, you don't have to have your real name on there or anything either. And I, so when I say you're going to be public, you don't really have to stand up naked or anything. Um, you choose a display name. So you're out there, but your boss or your wife or your friends aren't going to know which one is you unless you want them to. Now, the other way of putting yourself out there is with social sharing. So right now you can share to Twitter and Facebook. Uh, but after sharing, it actually generates a link that you can share anywhere. And you can also share to a blog uh, host on the journalistic site. And, Here's a shot of what a blog looks like. 
So your shared posts will appear here, and both members and non-members alike can see the post, subscribe to your blog. So there's lots of ways to make yourself accountable to others, right? There's one thing saying, I'm going to be consistent, or I'm going to lose weight, or, um, you know, or whatever it is, or I'm going to, you know, read more books. But it's another thing to actually say, I'm going to lose weight, here's my before picture, and here's my daily journal. And it's another thing to say, I'm going to trade consistent, and here's my daily trading. It's a very different thing. Okay, and that's pretty much, that's most of the features. And with that, we get to the money part. So the cost of journalistics right now, uh, we've got especially in October, is less than the price that a lot of vendors would charge you just for the real-time news feed. But for us, that's just one of the many features, features that are built on an understanding of the value of your trading data and the value of presenting it to you in a way that makes sense. The value in enabling to be able to, be able to add supplementary information to your trades easily in the moment and with minimal intrusion. And if you want to give this a try, all you have to do is go to www.journalytics.me and click to get a two-week a two-week free trial. That's easy for me to, to say. Peter, thank you for presenting. We appreciate it. I think this is a product that a lot of our clients will be interested in and hopefully they'll get something out of. Excellent. And thanks for having us along, Carly. No problem. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming.